Hi everyone, it's Friday the 8th of May and today the National Cabinet met and there are some changes coming up in terms of the starting the lifting of some of those uh, restrictions that have been in place for some time. As I discussed yesterday, nationally it's similar to what Queensland announced yesterday and that is that you can travel more than the 50 kilometres, uh, you can only travel more than 50 kilometres though if your family of five is going to someone else's home uh, of five people and in that house you're having a gathering of 10. So that's really the change in the, our restriction on movement. You can't drive more than 50 kilometres uh, with your family and just go to the beach. So you can't drive to the Gold Coast uh, and go for a picnic or, or something like that. If you're going more than 50 kilometres, it's your uh, family of five going to somebody else's home of five or less people. And that is the, uh, the change in the movement restrictions. The benefit of that obviously is if we have multiple families uh, wanting to visit their mum uh, on Sunday, then maybe families can take it in turns or, or, or plan to do that over the next week. Um, or maybe someone can take mum uh, for a drive to visit a couple of families that way. But it does enable us to have a little bit more flexibility for Mother's Day, which will be uh, fantastic. In terms of what else is happening, it really will be next week looking at, is there some way of still being able to manage to have social distancing uh, within the context of restaurants and cafes. So the governments will be looking at and businesses I believe will be looking at how we can make some arrangements to, to start some of those activities to enable us to do a little bit more of, of going out. So uh, you know, you'll just need to listen to the news for updates about what might happen around that. As I get more information again on Monday night, I'll let you know of further developments in that area. In terms of where we're at as a school, uh, very similar to the, the federal government's and uh, the national cabinet's approach, where there is uh, three stages of working through the COVID-19 um, restrictions. It's similar to what we initiated last term. We had a three stage uh, strategy for Tullawong State School and stage one was before the holidays. Stage two was this first few weeks after the holidays, looking at uh, what we do with home learning to start term two. And stage three, uh, which commences next week, is the gradual return of students to the school in a staggered way with preps and year ones starting first. The similarity of using stages is not a coincidence uh, because that is actually a, um, it's a research-based approach to how you manage uh, pandemics and crisis situations that you try and break down what's happening into a series of stages and plan for each stage, use the information from the previous one to inform the next stage. That's why you'll notice once we go into this stage of the national strategy for lifting some of the restrictions that they are saying that we need to wait three to four weeks before we commence the next stage. The, the reason for that is you need to um, you know, plan for your next stage, put those guidelines into place like those which are commencing on Sunday, and then you need three to four weeks to see what, what happens. Uh, and in response to that, you either need to re-tighten and reset the restrictions, or you can say, well, that stage has gone well uh, and our spread is still low, and therefore we can release restrictions further. So, you know, it's not about rushing to release these things. It's making sure that as we lift restrictions, then we know that we can sustain those. And we, we don't want a situation where we have businesses spending money reopening uh, and then having to lose money again to close again. So you can't have that sort of situation where you're just fluctuating and going backwards and forwards and, and nobody know what's going on. So having a plan strategy with stages giving yourself time to review is a sensible, responsible uh, and research and evidence-based strategy uh, to make sure that we can get back on track as soon as possible and sustain that into the future. So 
uh, I guess a summary of that is be patient. It's necessary for us uh, all to um, follow the, the strategies and be patient as we work through them and see what the impact is at, along each stage. Um, in terms of um, starting school next week, uh, we have a letter which is on Facebook as well and, and I, I ask all of the parents to read that. I will send it home with all the year ones and the preps on Monday as well, which just gives you a bit of an update on uh, where we are at as a school in terms of what's happening as students gradually return to school. So there's some information for you there. Uh, in addition to that, uh, on Monday, we will have, like I said, signage at the front. Um, and uh, most of you know where the school hall is. So prep and year ones will be entering uh, over towards the hall uh, and the uh, students who are from the essential workers families will still come through the main entrance of the school. There is a short video uh, which is on our Facebook page as well that you can watch that gives you a bit more of a detailed explanation of what's happening on Monday. A couple of things to finish up with today. Uh, first of all, congratulations to Tanya Edwards. She won the a box of chocolates in the year two's uh, challenge to find the funniest COVID-19 meme. Uh, that's uh, Tanya Alexis Edwards Dale's mum. So congratulations, Tanya. There's a box of chocolates coming your way uh, from its Tunstall. Can I thank, first of all, our school chaplain, Caitlin, and some of her fellow chaplains that helped uh, came in with her today to uh, provide lunch for the staff. So uh, Kurt uh, from the Hope Point uh, Church uh, came in today as a catering service and we've put a little thing on our Facebook to tag him and his catering business. But we really wanna thank uh, Hope Point Church uh, for coming in today and providing lunch for all staff as a thank you for the work uh, we've been doing in the community. So thank you very much to Hope Point Church and the chaplaincy. Uh, we also want to thank the RSL in Caboolture. They will be uh, reopening soon, I hope, and I hope you'll support them. Uh, the reason why I can actually do these updates with you on a regular basis uh, is because they, the, it was the RSL in Caboolture that donated the equipment uh, to our school to enable us to run uh, video programs and audio uh, audio visual courses for our students. Uh, so a big thank you to the RSL as well. The final thing today is in terms of planning for the return of students to school, some students have some difficulties with these transitions and some of those students uh, are students who have autism. And I know for the parents of, of children with autism, sometimes it's difficult to uh, you know, find uh, support or probably more in particular, find uh, someone who's gonna understand the difficulties that they're having. And so one of our parents I really wanna thank is Danelle Ardi Tendel. She's also on our PNC, but she's kindly volunteered to run an autism support group. So sometimes I know parents don't want to come in and talk to the teacher or the principal um, you know, about what they're experiencing because sometimes they don't feel that we really understand because you know, we might not have kids that have got autism and they'd rather talk to another parent. So Danelle's kindly offered to be a contact person for any parents in the community who have children with autism and may be experiencing uh, some anxiety or issues with transitioning back to school. So. Again, have a look at the short video that's on our Facebook site, which is advertising the start of all initial initiation of our autism uh, network at school. And you can contact Danelle to get some further information uh, regarding support for children uh, with autism. So uh, I said that was the last thing, but there is one very important thing to finish off with, and that is uh, happy Mother's Day uh, to all the mums out there. and. Thank you to you all for the wonderful work that you do in raising the, the children and particularly what a lot of you have done in the past uh, couple of months in supporting your students and working with us through the home learning. So I hope you have a great day on Sunday and I will see you again on Monday.